This video is about empirical formulas. And there may be times in the lab where you can figure out what the relative amounts of each type of element is in a compound. You don't know the exact number of atoms, but you know relatively how much it is. And when you have that, that is basically having all the subscripts of your formula down to lowest uh, terms, like reducing a fraction. So here's an example. What is the empirical formula? Empirical, by the way, is a fancy word uh, for experimental. And so that's where it comes from. And so it, uh, we can, the empirical formula is a formula that we can get by experimentation. So what is the empirical formula of C6H12O6. So I want to look for the biggest number that goes into 6, 12, and 6. Well, the biggest number that goes into 6, 12, and 6 is 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. I don't write 1 as a subscript. 12 divided by 6 is 2. And 6 divided by 6 is 1, CH2O. And that's going to be the empirical formula of, for uh, sugars in general is CH2O. So they might have, you might have five carbon sugars or six carbon sugars, but the uh, empirical formula is CH2O. Um, what is the empirical formula uh, for hg 2 uh, S. No. HG2. CL2. Well, the biggest number that goes into both 2 and 2 is 2. So if I divide 2 by 2, I get 1. So it's just HGCL. What is the empirical formula? For P2O5, dinitrogen pentoxide, there's no number that goes into both 2 and 5 except for 1. And so the empirical formula is just P2O5. Uh, let's see. What is the empirical formula? For acetic acid, and acetic acid is CH3COOH. It's written that way because that COOH is a, a group that has certain behaviors, but if we combine it to make it look like what you're more used to, that would be C2H4O2. Um, and then 2 goes into all of those, so that is just CH2O. Um, it's not a sugar, but it does have the same empirical formula. Um, let's see, well, okay, that's, so that's what an empirical formula is. Now, um, see how you might see it in a problem. The 
certain sample of a compound containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen only, doesn't contain anything other than that. There are um, Uh, 100.2 grams of carbon oxygen and 8.2 grams no um, 32.8 grams of hydrogen what is the empirical formula So here are the steps you follow for one of these. So you just follow these steps and you'll be fine. So you write all of your elements, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen. You write the masses that are given. Or if they give you percents, you just write the percents as if they're masses. You pretend you had 100 grams and then you can, from that percent, you would have the, uh, the number of grams that is the percent. I'll show you that in a minute. So 102, oh, there's 102 grams of carbon, and oxygen was 134.2, and hydrogen was 32.8. Now I divide each one by its atomic mass from the periodic table. So I divide oxygen by 16, carbon by 12, hydrogen by 1, so that gets me 32.8. 102, 100.2 divided by 12, eight point three five and one thirty four point two divided by sixteen eight point three nine and then I take each of these and divide by the smallest one. So first I identify the smallest one, eight point three five, and I divide each of these by eight point three five. And uh, I, I want to see if I get something close to a whole number. So 8.39 divided by 8.35 is practically 1. So I'll just put 1. 8.35 divided by 8.35 is 1. And 32.8. Divided by 8.35 is 3.9. That's close enough to 4 for me. So then I have 1, 1, and 4. So that tells me my empirical formula is C1O1H4. But I don't write the 1, so just COH4. So these are the subscripts. Okay, let's try another one. Okay. 
certain sample of uh, magnesium magnesium phosphide a certain sample of magnesium phosphide that has a mass of 107.2 grams there are 58 grams of magnesium what is the empirical point? okay so it's magnesium phosphide and I have my two elements are magnesium and phosphorus magnesium I know I have 58 grams I don't give you the mass of phosphorus but that's okay because I give you the total mass and we have the mass of magnesium everything else has to be phosphorus so this will be 107.2 minus 58 equals Forty nine point two. Okay, then I divide each of these by the molecular weights. The molecular weight of magnesium is twenty four point three. The molecular, the atomic weight, sorry, the atomic mass of phosphorus is thirty point nine seven. This gives me 2.386, and then I want 387, really. and then I want 49.2 divided by 30.97, and I get 1.588. Five, eight, nine. And then I identify the smaller one, which is this, and I divide both by the smaller one. So the top one divided by the second one is 1.5. And then 1.589 divided by 1.589 is just 1. These are not whole numbers. And I need to have whole numbers for my subscripts. So I ask myself, is there something I can multiply both of these by that will make them both whole numbers? And the answer is yes. If I multiply them by 2, they'll both be whole numbers. I have to multiply them both by the same thing. So if I end up with 1.5, I end up with something 0.5, You'll multiply everything by 2. If you have something point three 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 three, three, three multiply everything by 3. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. And this tells me that my empirical formula is Mg3P2. Okay, last one. What is the empirical formula for a sample of a hydrocarbon that is eighty five point seven one percent carbon
Okay, so it's a hydrocarbon, so we only have two elements, hydrogen and carbon. So we have carbon, we have hydrogen. Uh, when we are given a percent instead of grams, we can treat that just like grams. Assume you had 100 grams, and 85.71% of it would be 85.71 grams. Now, how many grams of oxygen, uh, hydrogen do we have? Well, we have 100%, so we'll subtract 85.71 from 100. So 100 minus 85.71... is 14.29 grams. Now I divide each of these by their atomic mass. The atomic mass of carbon is 12. The atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. So I get 14.29 85.71 divided by 12 is 7.14. I divide each of these by the smaller number, the smaller number is 7.14. 7.14 divided by 7.14 is 1. And 14.29 divided by 7.14 is close enough to 2 for me to just say it's 2. So my empirical formula is CH2.